Do you suffer from constant gas and bloating after meals? Do you suffer from constipation or indigestion? When you look at your stools, do you see undigested food in your stools? Or do your stools float? Do you have blood in your stools? Are you chronically fatigued? If this is you and you've tried all the gut focused treatments available from conventional medicine and you've also googled and tried all the natural gut focused treatments then maybe it's time to start looking outside your gut. Maybe the problem is in your head but not like the doctor means when he says it to you. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. So what do I mean when I say that your chronic gastrointestinal complaints could be all in your head? What I mean is it may be a brain-gut axis problem or a brain-gut-gut-brain loop at this point. And if you're shaking your head or like, what? Then Google it because it's pretty awesome. And science is loving this area of study right now because it really ties together a lot of symptomatology and, and reveals a lot of mechanisms that could be causing these issues that a specialized doctor like only a gastroenterologist or only a neurologist may not recognize or look into because they're looking at their individual specialties. We don't want to look at you as a specialist. We want to look at you as the holistic, unique individual that you are because that's how we get true results because we find true specific causes when we honor the individual and not just a set of symptoms that we then plug into a protocol. So today I want to go over the brain gut axis with you and show you how your GI complaints that aren't being resolved by GI treatments or GI uh, solutions out there on the web may be corrected or solved by addressing the head. So I've drawn for you this awesome artwork that shows you, patient watching this video, not patient, excuse me, person watching this video out there. Here's your head, so we've got your face just to orient you, but up here we have your cortex or your brain, and the brain comes down into the brain stem here, and right here is called the pontomedullary reticular formation. What the heck is that? We'll get into it, but that's important. And then when the whole brainstem here comes out of the skull, this is not anatomically completely correct because I want to blow it up so you could see it better. But the brainstem made up of the midbrain, pons, and medulla here, off the medulla comes the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is going to be very important to this conversation for us. And one reason it's very important is because the vagus nerve is the anatomical connection between your brain and your gut. And it works both ways. The brain sends signals down to the gut via the vagus and the vagus sends information back to the brain from the gut. So this is the brain-gut-gut-brain loop. The actual physical anatomical connection is via the vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve then goes to the rest of your gut. All the organs or viscera in your stomach as you would call it. The stomach here, the pancreas, the liver, the large intestine, and the small intestine. And everything else in there. The spleen as well which I didn't show um, but for to be complete here we'll draw a spleen because we are going to talk about the spleen. So let's put the spleen there as well. Alright, so your gas, constipation, bloating, chronic gut infection, all of these symptoms are occurring here but maybe due to a brain based cause. Well how? Let's get to it. Well let's talk about a healthy person first. In a healthy person the brain or the cortex 
is firing, 90% of the firing of the cortex is to drive the pontomedullary reticular formation. And what the PMRF does is it, it does all kinds of things, but it drives the vagus nerve to have what's called vagal motor outflow. And what that means is the vagus nerve works to go tell all these organs to do what they do. So the vagus tells your stomach, hey stomach, make hydrochloric acid to digest your proteins. Hey pancreas, make digestive enzymes to help further digest the foods, all the macros, carbs, fats, proteins. Hey liver, help detoxify these things. Hey gallbladder, release bile to help metabolize fats. Hey small intestine, absorb what this person just ate. Hey large intestine, get rid of wastes and absorb water. And the vagus also helps the spleen regulate your inflammatory status by, be, by via anti-inflammatory mechanisms. So vagal function is anti-inflammatory, okay? The pontomedullary reticular formation also blocks or inhibits the sympathetic nervous system or, you know, the stress response. So in a person with healthy frequency of firing in the cortex or healthy cortical function, 90% of that firing is going to the pontomedullary reticular formation. So you have excellent rest and digest organ function. So you can absorb your food. So you can be anti-inflammatory. So you can not be stressed out. Okay. It inhibits that stress fight or flight mechanism. Now, what happens is if something happens to decrease the frequency of firing of your cortex, now you're not feeding the PMRF, now you're losing vagal motor outflow, and now your GI tract is not getting the stimulation to function the way it needs to. So now you don't have the gastric motility you need, or things aren't moving through your GI tract at the rate that they're supposed to, so that could be constipation. That decreased motility in the gut could also lead to gas and bloating because if the food is not moving through, it's sitting there as substrate for bacteria in your small intestine to ferment. And if they ferment it, they're creating gases and that can lead to gas and bloating and constipation. If that food isn't moving downstream like it needs to, then the bacteria in your colon where they should be may reflux or move upstream into the small intestine where they shouldn't be and that can lead to SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And those bacteria again are going to ferment the foods in the small intestine, drive gas and bloating. And depending on the gas they make, they could drive or cause constipation. Or if they make a different kind of gas, if they make hydrogen, they could drive diarrhea. So methane produ producers drive constipation, hydrogen drives diarrhea. So you may have SIBO with diarrhea or SIBO with constipation, or you could have alternating in a mix. Backing all that up to say it could all be driven by decreased cortical firing. So for example, maybe you hit your head and have a concussion. You could say, doc, I've never had GI complaints and a year ago I had a concussion and ever since I just don't seem to be right in my gut. Well, studies have shown that after a concussion or after a TBI or MTBI, traumatic brain injury or mild traumatic brain injury, within three hours, you have intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So the head injury could have been the driver of your intestinal permeability, and then that permeability is continued, and now you have a gut brain, brain gut loop. Ask yourself, when I had my concussion, did any of the doctors who evaluated me ever ask about my gut or GI symptoms? No. So it's poten the potential is high that if you've had a concussion, they followed you neurologically to make sure you know your eyes were tracking, you were staying conscious and all of that. And once you were, they said, okay, you've healed from your concussion, you're good to go. But you've continued to have symptoms ever since. The reason is, the concussion has broad systemic impact. Bonking that head decreases frequency of firing of the cortex, decreasing PMRF stimulation, decreasing vagal motor outflow, decreasing GI function, promoting gas, bloating, constipation, chronic infection, etc. So unless you've had the concussion, 
and you've seen someone who understands all this and then goes and assesses your system metabolically to make sure these other things are happening, you're going to continue to have symptoms. You don't have to have had a head injury. Any sort of inflammation can drive this. So if we just put a big I right here for systemic inflammation, systemic inflammation equals decreased cortex firing, which is going to equal decreased PMRF, which can equal decreased vagus, and can equal increased GI symptoms. Okay, so any sort of chronic inflammation. Do you have gut dysbiosis or imbalance between your good bacteria and your bad bacteria? Have you had a head injury? Do you have blood sugar imbalances or hormonal imbalances? Do you have food allergies or food sensitivities? Do you live next to a farm that dumps glyphosate on the field all day every day? There's all kinds of causes both internally and externally of chronic inflammation. That chronic inflammation affects brain function, which affects GI function, and now you're off to the races on brain-gut, gut-brain loops. The final thing to understand, well not the final thing, but the final thing we're going to talk about today because this is a huge topic and this is just a primer. But again, as I said a moment ago, you could have been cured or healed from your concussion and still have remaining systemic impacts because of this brain gut gut brain loop. So it's like a little loop cycle, okay? If you close the brain end, say, by healing that concussion, but you leave the gut end open because the permeability is still there, so you're still being exposed to microbes and foods you're sensitive to and things are still getting through the gut that shouldn't because it's permeable, well that can eventually drive increased inflammation and then BAM! open up the head end of the loop and now we're at it again. Okay? Or if the loop was started at the gut and now we have an open head end, so maybe you have anxiety and depression and those sorts of things, that's due to a gut issue. Well, you clean up the gut, um, or I'm sorry, you, you, you are taking a medication, say, for the anxiety and or depression, but you don't address the gut. The medication may help the anxiety or depression symptoms for a little bit, but after a couple weeks, this gut issue is still raging. So again, bam, we open that cycle again, and the gut is driving the brain symptoms, the brain is driving the gut symptoms. So, the take home, if there is a brain gut, gut brain loop going on, you have to address both ends of that cycle the brain end and the gut end, the gut end and the brain end. And until you do that, there's potential that one end or the other is going to undo the hard work you've done to clean up the other end. So they'll be self-perpetuating. And within that, fundamentally, if you're going to leave systemic inflammation there, then it's going to be really hard to heal the way you want to heal. So optimizing inflammatory status is going to be huge.